Hi, I'm David Scarcella, and I am the robotics coordinator for the district, but I also have been teaching engineering for about 25 years now. And so I'm gonna give you a little component of what aerospace uh, engineers do um, and how they design planes and some of the components that you have to have uh, for a plane in order for it to fly uh, in the air. So um, what I would like for you to do is possibly look at one of these slides right here. So we're going to talk a little bit about the components of a glider. Okay. So on gliders, there are four main components that you have to have um, for a person to be able to fly a uh, glider. And one of those components is going to be the fuselage, which is going to be the long portion of the glider itself. That is where a lot of the controls are going to be, the handheld controls. Um, it's also going to be where the pilot and the co-pilot uh, co sit um, sometimes. You also have the wings. So you have the left wing and the right wing that is on uh, the glider itself. They also have what's called ailerons. Ailerons allow the uh, glider to be able to go to one side or the other. So in order for a plane to be able to turn, it uses two components of that glider, which are the ailerons, which allows you to be able to turn left or right. It also allows you to be able to have the rudder. So the rudder is back here towards the back. The rudder allows it to help where it turns side to side and the aileron. So what they do is they work together so that they're in coordination. If I want to go to the left, one will drop to the top and one will drop to the bottom and then the rudder would turn left or right. And so whenever a pilot is trying to learn how to fly these, he's got to get to the point where he understands what he's going to do with his foot pedals because there are foot pedals down below. Also, he has a joystick inside the cockpit because remember a glider, it doesn't use motors. So everything it is is using the different types of forces that are being acted on top of that glider in order to make it fly. Okay. You also have the tail, uh, the tail of the, the tail plane. And then these are the fins that are in the back. That allows you to be able to, you have the left and the right. Now you want to be able to go up and down. So it allows you to be able to utilize different forces on the glider to be able to turn your, your glider left or right or up and down because there are different forces that are acting onto that glider. Okay. So what I want you to do is look at, we're going to talk about the forces that are acting on that glider. So if you look at this glider, this glider is similar to what it is that you are going to get in your kit. If you look at this, you have four different uh, forces that are acting onto that glider. First, you have the thrust. Okay, the thrust is how hard or how um, uh, fast you are throwing your glider. Um, that would be something like the engine. Um, if you've ever seen a glider before, what happens is, is they have to be pulled by a, a tow plane. And as they go up into the air, the tow plane, depending on how fast that's going to be, that is going to be giving them their thrust that's going to be able to do it. And once they get to the point where they're high enough, what happens is, is that tow plane will release off of that glider and then it's up to the pilot and whatever it is that he wants to do. So if you first uh, is going to be the thrust. You also have what's called lift. Lift is when you have those ailerons and the wings. They have to be designed in a specific way so that the plane will lift. You want it to go up and down depending on where it is that you're wanting to go. You also have the weight. So the weight that is pulling down on that. So the weight of the actual plane itself and the weight of the pilot, the co-pilot, depending on what it is, you've got that force also acting on top of that glider. Okay. You also, the last one that you're going to have is going to be the drag. The drag is going to be the tail portion of it. The, the drag is going to be how much it's pulling back on that plane and working on those forces. So in order to react to those different forces, those different components of the glider will allow you to be able to 
work with those forces so that the glider can go up and down, it can do loops, it can do all kinds of different things without having to have an engine, okay? So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna kinda look at the packet that you got in the kit. There are several things that are inside the kit that I want you to be aware of that might help you with some of the forces that are on this glider and what happens, okay? So what I want you to do is you're going to look at the different components. So you should have in your kit, you should have two gliders. And the reason why I have two gliders in there is a lot of these components are very lightweight. That's called balsa wood that they're made out of and they're very brittle. So you've got to be very, very careful when you were opening the package so that you don't break one of them. We've had a lot of students in the past that have broken some of the components, so you wanna be very careful. Maybe take some scissors or just barely open up the packet. You also are gonna get four pieces that are gonna be on the in the plastic bag, okay? So the plastic bag is gonna to come together. You also have two paper clips inside of your kit. Those paper clips are going to help you add weight to your glider if it needs it, okay? Depending on what it is that you want to be able to do with your glider, sometimes you might be able to make it fl fly as far as you possibly can, okay? You can add weight to the glider in the front or in the middle so that it helps glide it a lot further and straight. Or if, say, you wanted to have your glider be able to do loops, so if you wanted them to do loops, you would probably take the force, the thrust, so you throwing it a little bit harder will make the, the wings catch the wind and then be able to make it go up in the air and do loops. So it depends on what it is that you're looking for and what reaction you want out of the plane. Depends on where you place the wings and how hard you throw it, okay? So looking at the kit, if you wanna go ahead and look at the kit and what you get in the kit itself, you should have two packets. You should have two gliders that are in there. We wanted to make sure that you could do different things with those. You also have two paper clips. You've got one small paper clip and you've also got one large paper clip, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up this bag. Like I said, you wanna be very careful when you're opening this bag because you do not wanna break these pieces. They break very, very easy, okay? So what you do is just pull those pieces or those components out and you should have three pieces. This is that fuselage that we were talking about. Okay, that's where the pilot would sit and also where the weight is. If you'll notice, there's like a little metal clip up here. We had talked about one of the forces that you have on the plane. This is adding weight to that front. Okay, so that was one of the forces that we talked about. And so this adds weight to it to balance it out once you add some of those pieces in there. You also have the wing. The wing itself, it has a little bit of a bend in it. So if you can look at that, you might be able to see that to where it has a bend, a slight bend in it. The reason why those bends are there is because of those ailerons that we had talked about. The ailerons are allow it to be able to get that lift, to be able to make it turn or whatever it is. So whenever you're inserting this wing into the fuselage itself, you wanna make sure that this bend that is in the wing is facing upward so that it allows that force, that lift that you're going to get with the plane. You also have one piece that looks like this. So the piece that you have that's here, what you're going to do is, and you're gonna do it very carefully. This is where a lot of students have issues where they break. There's like a little bitty thin line right here that's on the side. You can see it. What you're going to do is you're going to snap that in two. So I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm going to break those two pieces. So you can kind of see how those two pieces come. And now there's two pieces to that. Now this is where the tail fin is. Okay, this is the tail fin. This is going to be your tail fin. And it doesn't really matter. You might get different reactions to the plane, whether you have the circle part facing forward. Some students like to have it where the, fa the, the square part is facing towards the, the front. It just depends. You might get a different reaction to it. And then this is where that rudder comes in. Okay, this is the one where it would actually get it to where it would stabilize the back. 
and that's where you're going to get the drag so it's going to help it go one way or the other okay now on assembling this completely up to you and the steps that you want to do it I generally like to put my wings in first okay so whenever you're putting the wing in there's a slot up here in the front okay right here in the dead center in the middle of that you can kind of see this slot that's right here what you're going to do is very carefully you're going to insert that balsa wood into that slot and it should slide all the way in and you want to go right to about the middle of the glider body okay now you'll notice that it has a little bit of play so I can move this thing backwards and forwards you're going to experiment with that to see as you're throwing it it's going to react different if I have the wings in the front or if I have the wings towards the back it does make a difference in how it flies and what the reaction that you're probably going to get is you're going to see that the wind going across the rudder and the tail fins and the wings it's going to allow it to either fly straighter or if you throw it harder, it's going to allow you to be able to have loops and make it go around in circles. So you have to play with that. That's the reason why we were able to give you two of these so that you can kind of play with those different things. Okay. Now, there are two more slots on the fuselage or the body of this that you would insert the other two pieces. Okay. These are where a lot of people break the pieces. So you want to be very, very careful when you are looking at the different pieces that you have and the very top right here at the very top there's another slot that is where the rudder is going to go okay so you want to take it very slowly and then you want to make sure that you insert the rudder to where it's sitting like so okay you don't want to bend it you don't want to break it you just want to make sure you insert it very slowly so that it doesn't break because that's where you end up breaking the most of the the uh, students end up breaking that because what it does is it separates the wood a little bit and you want to make sure that it sits in there perfectly okay now some students like to try it out different whereas instead of the big piece they'll turn it around and then they'll put it upside down it might react different that's up to you to experiment and see if it actually does work uh, differently. I like to have it to where it's facing to where the large piece is down at the bottom so it looks more like a, 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 a tail fin. So you have two different things. You have the wing that can go forwards and backwards. You also have the rudder. Now the rudder has a longer slot so you can do the same thing with your rudder so that you can move it backwards and forwards to see if it reacts a little bit different. The last thing that you're going to have is you're going to put your tail fins in. Your tail fins, again, you can have it to where the round portion is facing forward or you can do it the other way. I like to put it to where it slides in and you're going to find the center of it and it should slide into that. And this should be a finished glider, depending on what it is that you're doing and however you put it together. Okay. Now, again, I said that there were two different pieces that were inside there you might be able to use a little bit different. We talked about one of the forces that you had, which was the weight component, okay? Say you, say you throw your glider and it just dive bombs or it, it goes straight up in the air, depending on which way your, your uh, wings are going. What you can do, and I've had students before, is they've taken the small paper clip or the big paper clip and they put more weight in the front so they can take that small paper clip and you can add it to the front for more weight and it will react to the plane a little bit different so that it might dive bomb a little bit more because you've got more weight sometimes what some students do is they will take that paper clip and they will put it in the middle of the plane okay and when you do that that is adding weight to the center mass of the glider itself so that might help it go straighter and flatter when you actually fly it all right so completely up to you it's up to you to do some experimentations on how it is that you want to throw it now what I would suggest that you do if you really wanted to get your loops you want to throw it as hard as you can or 
um, with a little bit of force. That was that thrust that we talked about. So as you throw it, you want to make sure that you're throwing it straight ahead. Okay. You don't want to do like a baseball throw and throw it because most of the time, whenever you do that, you're going downward with your motion. You want to make sure when you release it, you release it straight out. And what you're going to do is you'll see if you throw it with somewhat of a little bit of a force, what's going to happen is, is these wings are going to catch the wind and it's going to be and do a huge loop. Okay. Say I wanted to be able to get more distance. I wanted to be able to make that plane fly a lot flatter. What I like to do sometimes is add that little paper clip or the bigger paper clip, depending on what it is you want. Also adjust the wings, whichever way that you want to see, and you might test it out whichever way you want to be able to do it. And you want to try to fly it. As soon as you let go, you want to let go of it and you want to make sure that it's straight. Maybe a little bit elevated whenever you do it, because when you do that, then what's going to happen is you'll see the glider. It'll just sit there and it'll glide in the air, depending on how hard you throw it. And it depends on that force that we had originally talked about. OK, one last thing before I go is that you can see that some students have taken like map colors here. You can take different stickers, different things like that. They've had taken map colors and they've colored their planes. So that's the reason why you were able to get two planes is, is you can kind of maybe tell the difference is does me adding crayon or map color or stickers or whatever, does it react to the plane a little bit different? I would like for you to test that and see maybe with one of your planes, test it and see. You'll be surprised at what you'll find if you end up coloring your your plane and the reason why is you wouldn't think that crayon or map color or marker would add weight to your plane but it does it does add weight so whenever you paint something that paint has weight to it and it change has, it changes how the plane reacts in the air so you don't want to go crazy stickers aren't as bad so if you've got some old little stickers around the house and you want to put those on your plane you're more than welcome to do those those don't work as hard or as bad but i will tell you that markers do make a huge difference because that puts a lot of weight on this balsa wood because what happens this is a very very thin wood and it absorbs that um, marker um, very well and so what will happen is is it'll get a it'll, it'll weigh it down quite a bit and you're going to see it react to the plane a little bit different okay so what i want you to do is things that i want you to, to test is test adding more weight to the center or the front and see what that actually does to your plane i want you to be able to check the forces on does it fly a little bit different in the front or in the back change that maybe change the the uh, rudder flip it upside down see if it reacts a little bit different maybe change the tail fins backwards and forwards and see if that makes a difference and then I just want you to have fun with your glider okay it's a fun easy way to um, test to see why gliders work all the different components about what it is about aerospace and you need to understand that this is what aerospace engineers do on a regular basis if they want to be able to have a plane fly they've got to have the jet propulsion that they have there's your thrust that you have and then all the different components if you've ever flown on a plane before you can always see those ailerons that are going up and down you really can't see the tail fin what's going on but it's doing the same thing and the the pilots are doing the exact same thing you would do in a glider it's just on a bigger scale okay so I, what I want you to do is have a safe summer a fun summer and enjoy flying your glider thank you very much